Agricultural market. Agricultural and other primary markets are susceptible to periods of instability and uncertainty. Without intervention, farmers and growers face problems. For an economy that depends on agricultural and other primary products, instability and uncertainty cause low investment and low levels of development. Unstable prices are largely the result of the special characteristics of agricultural markets. Here, demand is stable due to price and income inelasticity. With many foods and beverages dietary staples, Long-run supply is elastic, given that it is relatively easy to transfer resources between uses. Land can be used to grow a variety of crops. The long-run supply curve is also considered to be the producer's planning curve. In contrast, short-run supply is perfectly inelastic, meaning that it is unresponsive to changes in market price. This is because crops and livestock have growing and breeding seasons. And once the season is underway, supply cannot easily be changed. Hence, changes in market price only affect planning decisions for the future. Finally, agricultural products are very susceptible to random supply shocks, including poor weather, disease and natural disasters, all of which create instability and uncertainty. One of the earliest economic models to explain this is the dynamic cobweb theorem, which was developed by several economists in the 1930s, including Nicholas Kaldor in 1934. If the market starts with a stable equilibrium and then is subject to a negative supply shock, the short-run supply curve will shift to the left, with actual output lower than planned. This raises price as fewer goods are taken to market. Diagrammatically, the new price is at the intersection of short-run supply and demand at price P1. At this high price, farmers and growers plan to produce more in the following year, indicated by the long-run supply curve. If we assume no more shocks, this will trigger a period of price instability. In the second year, short-run supply is increased. However, the effect of this is to depress price to P2. At this lower price, growers now switch output to another crop and reduce the quantity produced in year 3. However, this has the effect of increasing price to P3. If we follow the price path in green, it resembles a spider's web, hence the name cobweb diagram. If the process continues, farmers and growers will eventually leave the market, which threatens food supplies and increases food insecurity for the country. The uncertainty and instability also have wider effects. Not only do farmers and growers leave the market, but farm workers receive lower or more variable wages or become unemployed or underemployed. Farmers have less incentive to invest in new technology, forcing them to rely on inferior technology. At the heart of the problem is that decisions on next year's output is based on this year's price. Producers expect that the price next year is going to be the same as this year, but this is clearly a case of information failure, with potentially disastrous results. There are several ways of dealing with the instability, including schemes available to producers and governments. To restrict price movements, price ceilings and floors can be set, and the quantity regulated via a buffer stock scheme. A very poor harvest will shift the short-run supply curve to the left, causing the price to rise above the ceiling. At this point, stocks are released from the buffer stock to push the price back down. Conversely, if there is an exceptionally good harvest, market price would collapse, so the buffer stock managers will buy up stocks and take them off the market. The extent of buying and selling depends upon the agreed range of price movements. Given the difficulty of establishing a completely stable price, some fluctuation is allowed, which enables market forces and the price mechanism to work alongside intervention. Establishing price ceilings and floors, as well as using buffer stocks, are just two ways of stabilizing agricultural markets. In some cases, buffer stock schemes are inappropriate, especially when storage is difficult or expensive. Agreeing production quotas is another way of preventing surpluses and collapsing prices. Producers are given a quota, 
which determines total supply. Reducing quotas will reduce supply, preventing collapsing prices. Organizations like OPEC can set production quotas for its members to stabilize oil prices, providing a considerable benefit to oil producing countries. Quotas are commonly used for a range of commodities as part of the EU's common agricultural policy. Since 1984, EU dairy quotas helped reduce vast milk and butter surpluses. These were dropped in 2015 to encourage EU farmers to understand and respond more effectively to changes in market conditions, especially in the global economy. Of course, following Brexit, the UK will be free to implement its own agricultural policy as an independent state. For more videos, go to www.learneconomics.co.uk.